You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ask Drone You. As always, my name is Paul, and I have a very special guest with me today. He is the director of CSU's drone program, and he's got some big news for us. You're going to not want to miss this show. Who am I talking about? I am talking about Mr. Chris Robertson. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, and thank you for having me today, Paul. I really appreciate you letting me come on the show. Hey, absolutely. I mean, you have probably one of the coolest drone programs of all the schools. I know NMSU, they have their claim to fame of like the first, you know, UAS training center, but I think you have the most badass training center. So for those who are watching the show, tell us about CSU's drone program. And obviously we're here for another reason, but I want to give them some context to help them understand just what type of cool facility you're working with, the resources behind it. I mean, like, I think you're in such a cool position because you get to push the envelope in a way that other people simply can't. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate the words about uh, us being a, a pretty cool program. That's really nice and sweet. Um, the CSU Drone Center, yeah, it was uh, kind of the brainchild of our office vice president for research and our College of Engineering in 2018. And it was really stood up as a service center for a drone program. We had a lot of researchers, we had a lot of um, uh, university students, uh, professors, faculty getting into UAS research, education and learning. And they really needed the resources to be able to go out there and achieve various research tasks, whether it was uh, methane emissions monitoring or thunderstorm uh, outflow temperature and atmospheric measurements while it's actively going on or looking at DNA that might be floating around up in the atmosphere using uh, different samplers at that. They wanted a center that could have them expertise, the person power, the know-how, as well as the aircraft to be able to go achieve these, these goals. And so that is the foresight they saw when funding this center. Um, the other thing that, that CSU has that was a unique position is we have our own airport. And we actually- Pretty cool. I know. It <laughs> yeah, was, it's pretty cool. It was, it was kind of this perfect situation. I walked in uh, to start running the CSU Drone Center and standing it up. And I went, what? We have a 4,000 foot runway with 60 foot wide with 365 acres with nothing in it behind a fence that nobody could be in. That's the perfect drone facility. Yeah. And so we've taken that and turned it into, you know, one of Northern Colorado's uh, UAS test areas to go out and do just amazing things from looking at beyond visual line of sight to higher altitude testing, uh, different things like that at that site. It's, it's what we've been doing along, you know, collecting a whole fleet of um, various different aircraft. Um, we have approximately 40 drones from both fixed wings to VTOLs to multi-rotors to things that have been built by CSU. We have a 54.5 pound uh, quadcopter that was designed specifically just looking at uh, airframe development and how to develop a heavy lift aircraft um, to fix wings that we've designed in house or different ones we've taken and modified for different payloads and characteristics. So I have to ask you the the question that everyone wants to know anytime we have an interview. <laughs> what's your favorite drone? Oh man, you know I'll say that changes depending on the drone I'm flying. Um, <laughs> so that's a good answer in itself, to be <laughs> honest. So you know I. Uh, I grew up flying kind of the Inspire One. I was a police officer for 20 years and that was my first bird that got me into drones, was my first like actual go out and perform missions with. And just, I, I really liked that aircraft. It was very fast. It was very agile. It lets you do a lot of things. It was also pretty easy to crash if you weren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, so multi-rotor, I would still say I really enjoy flying the Inspire One. Um, the M600 is a great aircraft I enjoy flying. But all-time favorite is probably... The Applied Aeronautics Albatross. You know what really? that is? You've talked about it a few times. Yeah. I've had to Google it yeah. a few times at this point. Yeah, we have one in our fleet and we've flown some others. Um, they're about a 10-foot fixed wing uh, and they're a true fixed wing. So you've got to take them off and land like tricycle landing. Mm. Um, they fly off of Pixhawk. So you're working with Q-Ground Control. Uh, so you really got to think ahead of how to fly them. And then you can also physically fly them off a control station as well. So it's a little bit marrying of model aviation aeronautics. You know, I grew up as a kid building the balsa and skin wood airplanes, spending three months on it with my dad, going out and crashing them in five minutes and coming back and doing it again. So it's a little bit of like having to have that skill set combined with all the know-how of how to fly a drone and operate one. Yeah. So 
that one's probably the most technical, but also the most rewarding to see it go up, have it go complete a mission, come back and land. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's a powerful point. So you're now in charge of the CSU drone program, and you're doing something pretty big for this community. And we talked pre-show, and so I, I feel safe to say this, but you are essentially throwing an event in northern Colorado here in Fort Collins that is unlike anything we have seen before. And and like I said, we, we talked in pre-show, we talked about various drone conferences. And I think one thing that we can agree on is most of these drone conferences are boring. <laughs> They're so boring. And you see everyone's drones, you yep. see all their product, but do you get to actually see if it lives up to the salesman's hype, right? <laughs> and so there's not a lot of flying at these yeah. conferences. And so what you're doing Correct me if I'm wrong here. You're throwing the very first drone air show here in Fort Collins. Is that right? Yeah. So our, you're exactly right. Where I, where I came from this idea was, one, I mentioned we have the airport. And so we have a legit airport that's privately owned that we get to fly drones at. I don't think anyone has that. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. The way I've kind of designed it is drones come first at this airport. And if you want to fly an airplane in, which we do allow on occasion, or a helicopter, it is used for emergency responder basis as well. Those are usually the ones we work in, as opposed to the opposite, where drones are usually worked into the airport's traffic mm -hmm. pattern. So we have that. And we have that space. And... Like you said, I go to these conferences and I'd see these really cool things. And first and foremost, I'm a pilot. I'm a drone nerd, right? I love drones. I love flying things. I fly airplanes. I fly drones, whatever it is. I want to see the tech do the thing. And there's been a couple times when I bought drones in the past or I've worked with technology and it just didn't quite live up to what I thought it was supposed to or what was perhaps maybe in the brochure. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so whenever I go to these conferences, I see this thing, I get really excited. Well, I want to see it fly. I want to go see it do its thing. And so the impetus of this was, hey, why don't we have an air show at our airport, like a traditional air show, but it's all about drones. So instead of it just being, you know, watching airplanes fly, you can actually go up, integrate with these drones, see them, talk to the manufacturers and the manufacturers and the demo and the sensor, whatever they're flying or representing, have space where they can launch right out of the back of their booths, go access safe um, secure class golf airspace and demonstrate their product right there. And it's not a, um, you get to demonstrate it once per day in a demonstration zone. We'll have this, but this is the, the person can actually have their flight space and demonstrate it whenever they want to whatever client they want to do right there all day long. And so That's that was awesome. really the concept that was kind of the backbone of how we were looking at the air show. Well, I think it's a great illustration of like the whole trust but verify ideology, <laughs> but this is also for the community, right? And I think that's something that is so important to hit on because, you know, you've been around long enough that you've seen the maturity, the evolution of this industry, where we went from being on the news, the six o'clock hour, oh my gosh, there's a drone, <laughs> you know, to drones are saving lives with yeah. life-saving equipment, Bob, yeah. that's right, you know? And so what I feel like this air show is also doing is that community outreach, Absolutely. You know, getting, getting people to understand what drones really can do, but also what yeah. they can't do, right? Exactly. And I mean, you've probably run to that, you know, especially when you see a brand new drone pilot or you see someone who's just kind of getting turned on to drones and you see their eyes open up to the access to what I call the fourth dimension. <laughs> okay. So the fourth dimension, right? Not the ooky spookies, like poltergeist, you know, hair raising thing, but I call the fourth dimension like three to 400 feet above your head. Like okay. being able to look down at the earth from that perspective mm -hmm. is what I feel drones has really given us the access to for pennies on the dollar and, you know, not the skill set training of learning to be a helicopter or a fixed wing pilot, but you can with relatively safety, or a little bit of training. Or risk your life. Yeah, or risk your life. Yeah. Now access that fourth dimension. And so my excitement for this drone show is all about showing people the technology that is giving them that access to that fourth dimension. And it's both first responder industry uh, and just everyday community members. So at the air show, we've, we've set it up. So the first day is our industry day. It's a, it's a paid to attend low number event. And we really eyed this towards the sensor integrators, the aircraft manufacturers, the groups that want to have those lengthy conversations. Cause I don't know about you, but if you go to a show, sometimes you see something really cool. Like I went and saw a drone sprayer at one of the shows recently. I'm like, that's cool. I want to have a conversation. But I stood in line for like 10 minutes just to have a two minute conversation with a sales rep. This had the same conversation yeah. 400 times that day. 
And so I'm like, what I'd rather have is our first day be about people can go attend the event, not have to possibly wait in lines and get live demonstrations. And that's our industry day. And it's designed for first responders, researchers, industry members, drone pilots, anybody who's working within the drone industry to come really see the latest advancements in technology in both the aircraft and sensors and the software and get to see them demonstrated live in front of them. Our second day is all about community outreach, like you had. We really want to bring the community out. We kind of want to get that integration. I don't know if you've talked to like uh, middle schools or high school students. You can't go talk to them and say, who's flown a drone and not see a million hands yeah, shoot up. Yeah. They all love drones. And they're all getting into it. Our next generation is going to be about drones. Whereas if you go the opposite side, most people don't see or have flown drones before. If you go for a little older age group or different generation. So it's about integrating all of the, the generations as a community to come out and learn about the technology and learn about what drones are doing. And feel it. And feel it. Yeah. And, you know, we're offering some things on the community day specific to that. Um, and for instance... The if you want to talk about what you're going to be doing, I didn't even I wasn't even trying to tee us oh, up. No. I, I think what you're I'll doing you is up. really awesome for the yeah. community. Yeah. I feel like this is what we need. We need people to get hands on people who love it and people who question it. Yeah. And like, hey, come fly my drone. Yeah. Come see that I can't see through your window. Exactly. You know, come see that. Yeah, I could make a really cool 3D model of your house so that when you get old, all your drone delivery is going to be dropped in exactly the right <laughs> spot. You know, like helping them explain the value. Um, and I. I do appreciate you teeing us up I've, at here at drone. You, we are sponsoring the air show for a few reasons. I love what you're doing. Thank you. I, I love what you're doing for this community. I want to be a big part of that. You know, we just moved up here, as you know, they, they know too, but <laughs> we, we just moved up here and the community up here is just absolutely incredible. It's amazing. And it's because you do these types of events. You, you work the community in, you work the school in, you work. I mean, we've been working with uh, local administrators here at the airport. Mm -hmm. city council, uh, Larimer County as well. Everyone is awesome to work with. I don't know if you guys are all like, you know, uh, drinking from the same Kool-Aid or what, but everyone is really cool. And, and part of what we're doing here at this community uh, air show is we're allowing uh, kids to have hands-on time of actually flying drones. So in fact, you saw we were getting phantoms literally read up, ready uh, up front and testing different things because we've got a big training coming up, but I also wanted to see real Realistically, okay, how many working phantoms do we have right now? Uh, well, hopefully after the air show, you have the same number of working phantoms that uh, you went into. Uh, I'm going to be disappointed if we don't have one good crash, okay? <laughs> oh, don't uh, say the C word. Yeah. Hey, hey, if you're a real pilot, you know yeah. you're going to crash. It's oh, going to yeah. happen. You got to work through it. So. Those who have and those who will. Yeah. The, yes. Yes. Well said. Well said. So, yeah, we want to help you guys and and helping get that hands-on time, but you're doing a lot of other things as well. And I, and I think one of the biggest, coolest things is, you know, in the Olympics, uh, any major sporting event, you go to the Super Bowl, what do you see or what don't you see anymore? You don't see fireworks anymore. Exactly. You know what you see is a drone light show. Absolutely. And we're really excited. Matter of fact, your podcast is the first place we're going to announce this. We've had announcements out for the, the drone air show for about two months. Registration's live for it right now. Um, it's just Pretty simple. If you Google Drone Air Show, you can find it. But um, we're very happy to announce that we're going to be partnering with Bright Flight Drone Shows to offer a free drone light show as part of the Colorado Drone Air Show event. That is awesome. So which night is that going on? So Because I know the public gets to go to this event for free. Right? Correct. Yep. So there is no reason, dude, dad, I'm calling you out right now, <laughs> to show up and see this drone light show. So which yeah. day is it? I didn't know you knew dude, dad. Uh, uh, well, uh, so long story short, I'll make it really quick. Uh, I saw that he was doing something really, really cool yeah. for his neighbor who has cancer. Yeah. And he was throwing those comedy shows. Yeah. And so I bought VIP tickets. I just bought a group of them just because yeah. I'm like, I hate health insurance. I think it's a scam. And so I'm like, <laughs> I would rather give my money to someone like dude, dad. And and I couldn't go because my wife was sick. And I'm like, Rob, I'm like, dude, these are VIP tickets. They're like front row. Like, just go say hi to him. Tell him the drone you supports him, blah, blah. Yeah. So Rob got to go hang out with him. <laughs> I didn't. So well, I'll, but, I'll tell you, dude, dad's like one of my personal heroes. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Sidebar here. But yeah, so being a, uh, you know, a divorced father uh, and kind of learning the route of like navigating fatherhood by myself um, when I have my kids, like do dad's my comic relief to kind of like for that. So 
Love that guy. He in and Bina Fort Collins. Yeah, he's like right up here. Yeah. yeah. Did you see his minivan video? Just no, like, I oh seen gosh. That, one. that was the one where I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have to check that out. Uh, but yeah, so the drone light show, uh, it's gonna take place on um, you know, this the details are pretty solid, but we have to, you know, work with the university because it's gonna take place at CSU campus. Oh, really? In the middle of campus, so that all the the residence hall. Um, freshmen can come out and watch the show. Anybody on campus can come see the show. It's an easy venue to get in and out of, and we can hold a lot more people than the airfield. And the other thing is, is, is there lights there? Because it's going to take place at dark, we want to make sure people are safe prior to the show, walking around and have facilities and access there. So it's on CSU campus on um, hopefully Friday, okay. October 6th okay. at 9 p.m. Awesome. And I'm that stoked. Could, that could change a little bit. Uh, the public and people just need to check our website probably. Well, weather too, yeah. Yeah, weather probably about a uh, you know a month before the event to get the exact details on where to sit, where to watch. Um, but it's all it's all ready to go. We're going to have a good solid 15-minute drone light show on CSU I'm campus. I'm stoked. Will you be able to see it from Old Town by chance? I'm sure you will. You probably will be able to see it from Old Town, but... I'm thinking a great spot is Prost, just <laughs> right there. Prost might be good, <laughs> but the orientation is going to be to the... Uh, to the east. Oh, okay. So you want to view it looking west, essentially. Okay, cool. Very cool. So I'm ex- I'm I am stoked. So what is the link? Where can we send people to go sign up? Again, if you're a member of the public, this is free to attend unless it's like the industry night, right? The industry day. So we have we have a couple events prior to our air show. The Thursday, October fifth, mm-hmm. we're going to have a. Um, an opening ceremonies. And we have a couple people that are coming, coming to speak. Uh, I believe we've talked about you coming and speak there <laughs> yeah. as well. We also have Donna drones coming to speak as well during awesome. those open ceremonies. And that's going to be at the Hilton for our industry attendees. That is part of the package for the, there's 150 bucks to attend this in total, the, the industry day, the opening ceremonies. And then that night we'll also have an industry research showcase uh, mixer. Where we're going to talk about some of our sponsors, some of the research that CSU is doing. I'm excited for that. I really want to learn what you guys are doing because you just give me these little like teasers <laughs> and I'm like, dude, this sounds dope. Like, what are you guys working on? What? You guys flew a drone at 1200 feet with a DNA sampler on it? Yeah. Oh, that definitely makes you wonder like, what are they testing? And then I know the CDC site is like just north of you. So I'm like, <laughs> oh. you guys are not doing any gain of function. No, right? no, no. Nothing like that. <laughs> nothing like that. Uh, um, pure, pure benign stuff. More like what's floating around at 1200 feet AGL. That's a really good question. And that's what some of that research is looking to answer. Well, I wonder if that differs too, because you guys are so close to the foothills and all the downdrafting yeah. winds that you get from the mountains. It makes you you wonder, like, are you getting phytocides? Are they yeah. is that coming down into the valley? Yeah. You know, what health impact is that? See, this is why I want to know what you guys are doing. Well, I mean, we got another one kicking off this summer that was um, part of the AJ Cower Foundation gave us um, some research dollars to look at wildfire plume smoke. Hmm. So looking at the particulates in wildfires. And using that with a drone-based system to try to do estimation of downrange impacts of that smoke on, you know, health-related risks. Like, where is the smoke going to be and what's the particulate level going to be based on readings that we can take from the fire as it's burning? Like East Palestine. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one. The train accident. East oh, Palestine, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like how the plume literally mm-hmm. was showing up on radar in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. like hundreds of miles away. Yep. Seems like that information will be valuable. Exactly. You know what was most surprising to me about that entire thing outside of all the negative political crap that we're not going to talk about? <laughs> was that NTSB was still flying phantoms. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was actually kind of surprised. Like, I was like, Kathy, you guys are really f- still flying phantoms? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our other new drones haven't come in yet. So. <laughs> but absolutely, going back to the the uh, the air show, you know, people can register if they go to um, it's um, uh, call of state dash. Uh, forward slash drone drone air show colorado state dot edu forward slash drone air show drone air show the easiest way also is just google colorado drone air show will pop up you know awesome. we're we're the only colorado drone air show and we're one of the few if only actual dedicated drone air shows we've been able to find I think you are the first drone air show. I'm just going to throw it out there. I haven't heard of another one. There may have been some like fly-ins, you know, I, everyone knows about Oshkosh, but yeah. again, like you said, that's where you're working drones yep. in, not the other way around. So. Yep. This is, and this is our inaugural year. Um, people always ask me, what's my goal? My goal is to be the Oshkosh of drones. You know, I would like to, in two or three years, have this just event grow and keep growing in scale and size and complexity and the the amount of draw from the industry that we have there and just have this be a destination spot every year for the drone industry. 
um, to come and showcase their latest innovations. Well, I feel like you're in the right environment because look at how many drone companies are just in the Denver metro. I mean, it's insane. We we were out in San Diego working with Sony, and they're like, "Yeah, we have this great photogrammetric software." And they're, they're like actually just down the street from you, Paul. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, you've never heard of consilience before. And I'm like, no. So like, I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy, but also speaking about size and scale, you're going to be running a full size aircraft autonomously, right? <laughs> so, I mean, this kind of goes right into the Oshkosh thing, right? Exactly. Uh, I, you lost me a little bit there, the full size. Oh, I thought you were going to have, um, I thought with partnership with Ames, you were bringing in a full size aircraft and I thought you guys were going to try to fly it autonomously. No, no, oh. that must, must have been a skin oh, No, okay, Ames is okay. just going to bring in a static display for us. Gotcha. So we want to have a few. I might, I think I got a little too excited. Yeah, a little yeah, misunderstanding. That, I wish that sounds like a lot of fun. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been done, yeah. but, um, no, the, uh, we're going to have a few full size or, or regular size crude systems there, but they're going to be static. And that's the interesting thing. They got to come in before the event. They're strapped down, their circuit breakers are pulled, and they're going to be there just as static displays for people to see. We're trying to get some pieces from the airfield's historical past. Uh, at our airfield, we actually had airplanes built in mm. the 1950s. The Luscombe and the Fournier Coupe was really? actually assembled and built in the hangars at Chrisman, uh, several, wow. several variations of them. And we're trying to get some of that involved. We have a couple lines on them, but we haven't got confirmation that we're going to be able to get some of the historical airplanes there. But there will be some modern airplanes there for, especially on the um, community day for people to understand and interface with some of those training programs on how to become a pilot. We're all about the next chapter of, of aviation and that's both crude and uncrewed systems. Yeah, totally. Totally. Well, Chris, thank you very much for coming on the show. This is really exciting. I'm, if you can't tell, I'm like passionately <laughs> excited about it. That's why I wanted to have you on the show. It's wonderful to have you as a partner in, in our, our Cardo Drone Air show. Well, thank you. And, and it's wonderful to be working with CSU as well. I mean, I, I just, I can't say enough and I'm probably not going to verbalize it very well, but the support systems and infrastructure that you guys have and what you're fostering in the way that you're fostering it is incredibly inspiring. And uh, it's funny because I've always joked and I'm like, well, why would any like drone pilot like actually go to college? But seeing what you guys are doing, it's like, okay, that's a, <laughs> that kind of blows my ideology out of the water. Cause like you, I, I think we had this conversation at lunch uh, at, um, I forget, at DC Oaks, and we were talking about kids now are not just pilots. Yeah. They're systems engineers. Yep. They're coders. Yep. Right? They're test pilots. You know, they have to understand how to code, how to build, how to fly. It's, you're not just a pilot anymore. And in manned aviation, we have the mechanics, right? But, and the pilots, and those are separate things. But as a drone pilot, it's like all those things are integrated, and you guys are teaching all of that. Right? Exactly. And that's, you know, I was having this exact conversation at lunch today. It's, it's funny, is about the reskilling and upskilling that this new technology is going to offer, as well as the new skilling of the, the, the new generation of pilots, because you're exactly right. You know, you got to tie in there. You got to know how to solder. You know, how, you got to know how to know about um, airframe mechanical engineering. You have to know what all these things go into this flying computer that we call a drone. And as this industry progresses even further and grows even further, what are the new jobs are we going to create? There'll be some jobs we may start to impact. Like there's no denying we've impact modern aviation and modern helicopters with drones mm. and that, that kind of industry. Replacing helicopter filming jobs with drone filming jobs. And other things, inspection points, things mm. like that. What are we going to impact as this, this only becomes even more? And how are we going to train that next generation of pilots and mechanics and computer engineers? And that's where you come in and somewhere I come in as well. Yeah, totally. Totally. And I like how you talk about, you know, both of us working in, in the, uh, in the industry because it's a very, it's a very large industry and it's only growing. I want to have you back on the show. Cause I want to talk about exactly that point of not what upskilling, like you said, what are drone pilots going to be taking over? And I want to take that one step further like with the implementation of chat GPT, right? And <laughs> Baird and GPT-4 and auto GPT. <laughs> yeah. I, like I was looking at eLuna last night and I was like, wait a minute, I can fly in orbit. And instead of going into PIX4D, I'm like setting up my processing template, running step one, running step two, cleaning up the point cloud, running step yeah. three. You know, like yep. eLuna is like, uh, chat GPT, please create a 3D model and a 3D mesh with an FBX <laughs> at this rate, you know? And here's the photos and the data set and go do it in this software. Yeah. 
boop, three minutes later, done. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. you, it's, it's funny you talk about chat GCP I'll, 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 or GCP it's a GCP I GPT, mean, GPT yeah, I know yeah, I've been talking yeah. about drone points too much yeah. <laughs> but we were having this conversation while we were flying a methane sensor yesterday we were out getting a methane sensor and I was working with a, a biology professor at CSU and then one of my students who writes all my code for me who actually had kind of written some Raspberry Pi codes so we can get telemetry link back from this methane sensor we integrated and the, and the, the professor looks down and goes Hey, what do you think about chat GPT? You're pretty much going to be replaced as a coder now. You can just ask, write me a code for Raspberry Pi telemetry link, you know? <laughs> and so it's it's pretty funny to have this conversation come up twice in two days. And What did he say, though? I'm curious. What was his response to that? He kind of laughed. He's like, yeah, I guess I'm going to be replaced. <laughs> oh, geez. And I, of course, then I had the conversation with the professor. I said, what are you going to do when one of your students turns in a paper written by chat GPT? If it hasn't already happened. Right? Yeah. Right? And so... Yeah. And then, of course, we all know that AI married with drones is a very interesting topic. And the machine learning aspects has implications across the board for yeah. what we do as we look at sensor integration and flight path and autonomy moving forward. Well, totally. And I mean, if you also look at the regulatory framework as well, there's currently no methodology to have something like chat GBT fly a drone or yeah. be present with a drone. Right? right. And so I feel like drone pilots are, are a little bit protected right now. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to. Uh, count on that for too long, but yeah. it seems like our job is actually a protected job against AI. Because I yeah. just watched that 60 Minutes thing on AI last night, and I was like, this is not even scratching the surface. I'm yeah. like, this is like the boomer edition of uh, Chad GBT, write yep. me a cool soulful poem. It's yeah. like, it's like, how about code my next car? <laughs> Give me 10 more horsepower. You know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, that's, you know, and it, you bring up an interesting point, and it's something I talk about a lot that drone pilots are protected. And I think, you know, aviators in general are protected. Um, one thing I've always thought about is, would you get on an airplane without a pilot? Hell no. Mm -mm. Now, the reality is most of those airplanes can pretty much fly themselves. Oh, and I know because we've right. been training a lot of American Airlines pilots, by the way, because right. this is their retirement. But but you still wouldn't get on an airplane without a pilot. Uh-uh. And so you think about, you know, the urban mobility and the drones and everything. Are you going to get in a sky taxi without a pilot? Even though it's going to do... 99.9% .9 of the flying. So interesting point, because on the Ehang 185, you cannot actually have pilot input. Like, it's not even plausible. Right. And and the answer to, to your question is absolutely not. Right. So, so I think that's going to be a societal thing. We're going to be pretty protected for that. And then even in aviation, it's just a dynamic environment. You know, it's a mm -hmm. three-dimensional dynamic environment with other vehicles at play and and it requires some split second decision making we're always going to have to have a human on the loop mm -hmm. like i think it's gonna be a long time before we're going to get to a human's completely out of the loop of drone flight or just flight in general yeah so and i tell my students all the time especially when we're doing automated mission programming is yes you can punch go and you know 99 out of 100 times nothing's going to go wrong but you still got to be the human on the loop watching the system making sure it's going to do it and do it the way you programmed it. So I think you're right. We're protected for a while. I think, yeah. I think the worst thing that's going to happen is like, it's going to turn into Uber Air for us. And we're <laughs> going to be flying air taxis around for people. <laughs> Why do I have this vision of like, you and I like as some washed up cabbie <laughs> yeah. with like a cigarette out of our mouth and a slide. Uh, just being like, where to? Yeah, seriously. Punch the button and sit back. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I used to train this once in a time and do cool stuff. And now I'm just an air taxi. I'm going to pick up a New York accent and be like, where you want to go? huh?" <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'll have to do Boston. How you doing? Park the card, hand me the ad. My dad's family is from up in that neck of the woods so I'm, yeah. I'm familiar with both of them they i feel like they have a mixture of the two yeah so my dad used to say all the time go get the car gas it up for your mother <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> yeah. well my boston accent's nothing like me you got me beat oh well i'm glad it's not a competition so yeah. um hey chris i really appreciate you coming on the show man thank you very much it's been a true pleasure thank you for having me totally we're gonna have to have you come back on i'm serious Absolutely. i want to talk about this I, yeah. this is a really I, it's an issue that's not being talked about. And you have certain companies pushing for a world of no pilots. And it's like, mm, that doesn't exist right now. And even with the remote operations, it's like, yeah, but you still have to have someone exactly. either virtually on the sticks or able to be on the sticks. So exactly. I think it's a topic I want to hit. But anyway, thank you very much. Yeah. CSU Drone Air Show. CSU Dr or Colorado Drone Air Show. Colorado Drone Air Show, October 5th through 8th, right? October 5th through 8th. 
uh, actually, you know, so the main events are six and the seventh. Okay. But we have an opening ceremonies on the fifth and the eighth really clean up. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we will be there. If you want to come take flight with Drone You, see us there. I think you're really, if anyone's in the industry, I think you are absolutely want to go to this because they are really pushing the envelope here at CSU. And I think, you know, this drone industry up here in Northern Colorado, Denver, it's huge. And to see something like this coming about, you've got to be a part of it. So make sure you check it out. There are a couple of people I would love to see there, Chris, like that uh, Frank, Z- Frank Zapata mm-hmm. I just showed you. I would love to see that. Yeah, drone so, there. I mean, I've got my big wish list items, I'll tell you. Like we were talking about, I'd love to see Jetson One come out. Okay. You know, I don't know. I, I know they're overseas. You know, I'd love to see Boeing and Situ show up. Mm. Um, you know, Lockheed Martin with like a stalker platform. Oh, wow. You know, and of course, love to have all the DJI flagship represented, the Autels. Um, Autels already signed up to come. John I was Mc- going to say John McBride. Where John you at? McBride's like, come coming. You can't call him out. He's, he's coming. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Skydio, all the major stuff, as well as we really want to make this for the innovators out there. So the startups. The group that has something to really show that they're pushing the envelope, they're breaking it out and come show their new whatever it is, whether it's a new drone, a new piece of tech, a new software or a new sensor. We want to see it. We want to experience it there. I think we should bring out that big cleaning drone to show people like, here's the first step of smart cities. Although I'm Absolutely. not for the 15 minute city thing, but for cleaning buildings, I'm all for this drone. Absolutely. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you, Chris. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank you everyone for joining us today. You've got to check out the Colorado Air Show going on in Fort Collins, Colorado, October 5th through 8th. If you're in the industry, you're going to want to be at that mixer. I promise. And if you live here in lovely, colorful Colorado, then join us for a flight experience you won't forget. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks again for joining us at Ask Drone You. 